Hello guys and welcome to Looking Project. Today I've got the next bit Robin, the flopped cloud smartphone from 2016 which they used to sell for 400 bucks. At the moment it's on clearance on Amazon 130, it's yours. It's a very good phone, but is it good enough? Let's find out. Okay guys, so let's get the unboxing out of the way first. Kudos to Nextbit for supplying such a nice box, it definitely makes a very good first impression and it makes the unboxing experience quite pleasurable. <laughs> so let's open this baby up, what do we see? Hey Rebel, meet Robin. Okay, a very simple instruction manual how to plug in your phone and how to charge it up. The midnight color. USB Type-C noodle cable. Cloud SIM ejection tool. And the problem I've got straight from the beginning is the lack of charger. They were trying to charge an extra 15 quid for an additional charger which I really don't think is necessary because the phone was launched at $400 anyway so additional 15 quid. Come on guys you should have included that in the package. What do you have at the back? The unboxing continues. Be heard, need help with Robin, nextbit.com and over here you've got some more instruction manuals. So let's waste no more time and let's jump to the design and build quality. We have all seen Baldy bending the phone like a waffle but I'm not gonna do that today because overall the build quality is quite alright actually. It's made of plastic, pure plastic. But check this out, there are simple elements which makes this phone kind of unique. There's this uh, cloud logo over here, there are phone notification LEDs, when you synchronize with the cloud, they kind of uh, show you what was the situation at the moment. Dual tone flash, 13 megapixel camera, over here we've got the next bit logo. On the side the volume rockers are nicely positioned and it's a surprise for me to find out that they're actually quite clicky and easy to press. On this side we've got our SIM tray as well as the fingerprint reader which is very reliable, not exactly the quickest one but it gets the job done 100% of the time. On top we've got a microphone and a 3.5mm jack. At the bottom we've got our USB Type-C port which doesn't look very well just after 3 weeks of usage. You can see that I already managed to chip it off somehow. We've got our microphone here and over here we've got a hidden notification LED. I have totally no idea why they've placed it at the bottom. At the front we've got our sensors hidden over here, 5 megapixel front camera, one speaker over here. At the bottom we've got the second speaker, so we've got dual speaker setup. Size wise the phone is not very small though. Let's compare it quickly to the Axon 7 and check this out. It's more or less the same size, the difference being is that this one is quite boxy, this one is more rounded and this one has a 5.5 inch screen, this one has only 5.2 inch screen but to be honest with you I'm totally fine with the size, I mean I, I can do 5.2 inches, it's not a problem for me. And now let's jump straight away to the fingerprint reader, check this out. As you see it's not the very fastest one in the world but definitely gets the job done, it's very reliable, it unlocks every single time. One thing that you really gotta press the fingerprint reader, you can't really just rest your finger on it and expect it to unlock. I mean you really have to press it like that to unlock but it's not a problem for me because it's not protruding and I thought it is gonna be quite hard to press in the beginning but I was wrong, I mean it's even easier like that. The one and only gesture you've got with the fingerprint reader is when you double press it it launches the camera. Spec wise I think you know what we're talking about, the infamous Snapdragon 808 which rendered most of the <laughs> recent LG devices into a boot loop. Um, what else, the screen is LCD, Full HD, 3 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of storage, 100 gigabytes of cloud storage which is definitely a gimmick and they've put a 2670 milliamp hours of battery which is rather small considering the size of the phone but let's say it's something like that and let me tell you straight away one thing that I always say if you're new to my channel welcome in my channel you can see a real-time battery tests in my phones because I've used this phone for about three weeks now and I can tell you straight away that the battery isn't very impressive but it isn't very bad as well what I'm talking about let's check this out these are some real-time screenshots that I took after each day of using the phone and let's check it out what kind of battery life should you expect from that phone. As you can see I've got 3 hours 9 minutes here, 3 hours 15 minutes here, 3.30, 3.56, 3.21, 3.10. 
Now, this measuring over here is with battery saving mode enabled all day long and I managed to get 3 hours 34 minutes. So basically you're not really saving a lot of battery with this mode on. 3 hours 10 minutes, 2 hours 54, 3 hours 12, 3 hours 10, 3 hours 11, 3 hours. That's my last screenshot guys. So basically battery life is well, how can I put it? Between 3 and 4 hours of heavy usage. At least there are no surprises, there are no big differences between using your phone on Wi-Fi or on 4G only. You constantly get between 3 and 4 hours of screen on time. You can't get any less, but you can't get any more than that. Which is okay, considering that you've got almost 2700 milliamp hours, and let's say the LG G5 has 100 milliamp hours more and it gets a worse battery life so if the battery is better than the g5 well that's that's okay considering i mean especially considering snapdragon 808 how hungry it is and how not good overall this processor is i guess i guess the battery life is fine it's okay the recharge times are pretty good as well let me show you my screenshots that's where i started half an hour you've got 39 percent of battery one hour, you've got 81% of battery, and with one hour 29 minutes, you've got 100% of battery, which to my book, one and a half hours is definitely a respectable result. So let me tell you about the screen quickly. 5.2 inches, full HD, IPS, LCD, very sharp screen, the black levels are really good, the contrast and saturation is pretty good as well, there are absolutely no options to tweak the screen to your liking, but it's been factory setup towards the little bit of warmer side um, compared to most other LCD screens out there. But let's check it out. It's really good. The black levels are really deep. Check this one out. It gets bright enough as well in bright sunlight. You're not going to have a problem with that. So I'm overall, to be honest with you, I'm overall quite happy with the screen. I didn't expect that. So that definitely shows they used a high quality IPS screen over here. So the screen gets my thumbs up. The next thing to talk about quickly is the Android experience, that's basically stock Android. The only difference you've got is the camera app is a little bit different, you've got gallery which is different, Nextbit Home that's their own application and pretty much that's it. Everything else is, is stock. It's running the latest Android 7.1.1, .1. they said that they're gonna quit the updates this month so have that in mind. But I guess there's always gonna be some sort of a custom ROM that you can flash. But to be honest with you, at, at the moment the phone works perfectly fine, it's very snappy, it's very quick, so it's, it's overall okay. The RAM management is pretty good as well, but one thing I should mention right now is the heat management. Now you probably heard about Snapdragon 808, it caused quite a few boot loops on the recent LG devices like the G4 and the V10 is basically infamous for that. Um, and on the BlackBerry Prif it didn't perform quite well as well, the Nexus 5X uh, had boot loops as well, so over here you've got no boot loops, the heat management though, is, although it's good, the phone starts to throttle because in, in about only 10 minutes of gaming it starts to heat up quite a bit at the back and starts to drain the battery quickly. So basically, what I found out is that when you start the game, you're having an excellent experience for just about 10 minutes. Let me show you what I'm talking about. That's Epic Citadel. I'm testing all my phones with this application just to see what kind of gaming performance should I expect. On Full HD, ultra high quality, you're having 60 FPS, which is crazy, which is excellent results for that chip, guys. But only about 10 minutes of playing Mortal Kombat, I came back and check it out. 44.8 FPS. So basically in about 10 minutes when the throttling kicks in, you're losing frame rate and it's not unplayable, but it's not a very good experience overall. Now, in case you're wondering how did I manage to swap the recent with back buttons as well as to install the SA team, well, there is a simple application called Custom Navigation Bar. I've got a tutorial on this application and I'm gonna put it in the link in the description down below, so you might wanna check this out as well. Now, when we talk about the sound, we've got two front-facing stereo speakers and let's say how they sound.
So you probably heard this speaker is a little bit louder than this one. I have no idea why they did it like that, but it is what it is. Overall, overall, I would say that these speakers are very good. They can't really match the Axon 7, but they're pretty close and they sound better than, let's say, 90% of the phones out there. One thing though, they're not very loud. I mean, especially in the loud environments, they could have been just a little bit louder, but it's just me nitpicking. I mean, they're gonna get the job done most of the time. Now, when we talk about headphone output, I would say that I'm pleasantly surprised because it exceeded my expectations. It's better than most phones. Again, it's not a match for the Axon 7, but you'll be very satisfied with the headphone output. There's also an equalizer. If you go to Google Play Music, you can tweak your equalizer from over there. So the last thing that I want to talk about today, guys, is the camera setup. As I said, 13 megapixel 4x3 aspect ratio at the back and 5 megapixel at the front. Well, the front-facing camera is nothing spectacular as you would expect. Let me show you a couple of selfies that I did. Now that's one selfie over here. It's not too bad. Another one over here. One more. And there's the last one. It's okay. Overall, it's okay. The front camera is okay. The back camera though. The back camera is a little bit... Well, how can I put it? Check this out. That's without HDR. That's with HDR. That's HDR again. That's definitely nice. This one is low light, it didn't turn up quite well. This one is with flush with a complete dark environment. It's okay. This one was me trying the bouquet effect a little bit. Definitely gets the job done. Now there's the difference between without HDR and with HDR. It's okay to my book. Check this out. Now again, I was trying the HDR effect on and off. What I've noticed is that the dynamic range could be a little bit better, but it is what it is. At least you're getting plenty of detail, especially over here on this uh, HDR photo. Check this out. You can read absolutely everything. There is no blurring towards the corners. Everything is nice and sharp. So in terms of sharpness, I'm surprised. But in terms of dynamic range, it suffers a little bit. The autofocus doesn't work all the time quite well. Check this one out, that's with flash. That's without flash, but it's a little bit it's a little bit blurry. Again without and with HDR. And as you can see, even with the HDR, the dynamic range is still not very good. I've got two more photos over here. And as you can see, the level of details is absolutely phenomenal on this camera. It definitely exceeded my expectations. So the camera, although it's not brilliant, the autofocus is a little bit slow and the dynamic range suffers. I can see plenty of detail and the HDR works quite well as well. Definitely is better than the one on the <laughs> Axon 7, which is way more expensive at the moment. Now let's check the video quality. Hello guys and welcome to Vlogging Project. Today I'm gonna test the video capabilities of the next Bitrobin. And... Uh, as you already know, the camera app is basically useless. It offers absolutely no options whatsoever. So basically, I have totally no clue if this phone has any kind of software image stabilization or it doesn't. The only thing I know is that it doesn't have an optical image stabilization. So let's let's shake this camera a little bit like that, a little bit like that. Let's see the dynamic range in the transitions. And... Uh, yeah, that's walking and holding the phone with one hand as always. And uh, let me upload it to the computer and see what the results are. As you just saw, the video is quite good as well. There is no optical stabilization, only digital. But to be honest with you, I didn't expect it to work that well. So definitely I am surprised over here as well. So where does that leave us with the next bit, Robin, guys? $130, that's a very good price and you're getting an all-around excellent device. Design and build quality is fine unless you intentionally don't bend your phone. The screen is quite good as well. The stereo speakers are excellent. The headphone jack is excellent as well. The camera is, eh, I would say, average. The video camera is pretty good as well. The battery life is predictable between 3 and 4 hours of screen on time of heavy usage. Recharge times are quite quick as well. The software is nice and clean. Plus you've got 100 gigs of online storage, God knows how much is gonna last that one for. In case you didn't know, Nextbit was bought by Razer. I totally have no idea what they're gonna do in the future, but as I know Razer, they might come up with something quite interesting, like the Razer phone or something like that. 
but time will tell but at the moment 130 bucks is definitely a go guys definitely a go in the uk is 125 pounds which is still quite good check it out in the description down below it's an amazon link that's the best price you can get with the warranty and everything so yeah if you still haven't decided i really hope that my video helped you out to see if that's the phone for you guys thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one adios